Come here. Hey, Dale. Hello. Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials Landscape Edition, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine material graph to do with landscapes. Today, we're talking about how to set up an auto material based on the slope of your landscape. In the various methods that we'll be using today, we will be using the height lerp function, we will be using the vertex normal world space node, we will be using the pixel normal world space node, and also the linear interpolate node. So if at any point you want to know what these nodes are actually doing, you can check out my five minute materials videos, which will pop up in this corner. So with that being said, let's jump straight into it. Here we have our landscape from the previous video and you can see these hills, they just look a bit, well, they just don't look right, aside from the fact that they're blue. Let's go into our landscape material and have a little poke around. So my first method of doing this is using the vertex normal world space and the pixel normal world space. We then put an add node after each of these and also a multiply node after these as well. And then what we do is we get some parameters. Uh, we then saturate each of these. So after we make sure our hardness values default are set at one, we add these together and then we subtract one. Now the reason we do that is because these have a maximum value of one each. So when we add them together, they have a maximum value of two. And by subtracting one, we bring it down into the range of the lerp. So then what we do with this is out of here, we go linear interpolate. And we can interpolate between the grass and a dirt color or a rock color or whatever your textures are for your grass and your cliff. And we plug that in to the grass layer and then put that into the base color. So you might want to rename this to grass slash cliff or something. Um, for now, I'm just going to call mine grass, but it might be worth denoting that this is an auto material for, you know, your artists or for yourself. So we have a look at this. It's pretty underwhelming at first, but if we've created a material instance of our landscape material and assigned that to the landscape, we can now edit these parameters in real time. So I'm going to just doodle with this for a couple of minutes until I get it sitting how I want it to. So with values of 1.5, negative 0.28, and negative 0.75, we end up with a blend that looks like this. Now, this is pretty good. And depending on the style of your game, this might be more than enough. But one thing that you might notice is that the normals haven't changed because we haven't done a normal lerp. So if we were to go into our landscape and just quick and dirty, lerp between our rock texture and our grass texture using the same calculation that we've just made above and we put that into our grass layer everything's going to explode it's going to say no nah, i'm not happy uh, it's not even going to throw an error for some reason but the reason this is going poorly is because we're using the pixel normal world space node in a calculation to do with generating normal maps so you can imagine the pixel normal world space is using the normal map in its calculation, then it's feeding that into here, changing the normal, and it just makes this feedback loop where everything just explodes. So what we're going to do instead is just grab a node off of the vertex normal calculation and use that instead. And you can see we've got our rock texture and our grass texture with a bit of blending. Now, obviously I would want to readjust this so that it's happier. And, you know, we could roll with this, but this is where this method can be a tiny bit underwhelming. It works really well with color changes, but not so well with normal changes. An alternative method that we can use is to use a height lerp function. So if I was to get the inbuilt height lerp material function, you can see it's got a lot of doodads on it. Uh, it's got a lot of extra shit going on, but you know, we don't want that. So I've just stripped out what we need from it. And so if your material has a height map in it, usually a height map would be stored in the alpha of the base color. For me, it's stored in the blue channel of my normal maps because I don't use base color. So I'm just going to grab this out. We're going to slap it into here. The transition phase is going to be our vertex slope calculation. And then the contrast, I'm just going to set this to 10 for now. And then this would go into the lerp here and also into the normal lerp. So at this point, we're not even using the pixel normal world space section at all. So if we go ahead and hit save, then you'll see that we get this nice kind of 
transition between the rock and the grass based on the height of this texture. And now if we lower the hardness of the slope, and maybe we'll put the thing back up a bit, then you can see we start to get this really nice transition. Uh, very clean. So this might be a lot more suitable for your project. And we can go one step further, albeit with a bit more performance cost. And instead of putting this straight into our lerps, we can put the output of this into the add that we had before. And then subtract one and then saturate that and that goes into there. But not the normal lerp, obviously, because we're using the pixel normal world space node. So combining both those two methods, we can get some results like this where you know it transitions based on you know the grass is normal as well and does the height lerp here so now if we go to our landscape edit tool we go to sculpt and we just start sculpting some stuff you can see that you know wherever there is a slope there will be cliff and you know we can do it down this way and that's looking pretty fantastic so now you have full creative freedom to just Paint whatever you want, and this will take care of most of it. And it will look quite nice. Now, one thing that we've neglected is our grass inputs. Where we've painted our grass layer, there is grass, which is great, but it's also on these slopes, which is not ideal whatsoever. So the solution to this problem, uh, and I'm just gonna move our grass up here nearer to our calculations, is to simply multiply the output of our vertex slope calculation thingo by this sample. So we put that in there and wait for it. Ta-da! Now, if your grass doesn't fully disappear from your cliffs like this, what you might want to do is basically grab a copy of this and chuck it up here. And let's call this our grass slope exclusion offset and our grass slope exclusion hardness and then we're going to put that into the multiply of this grass sample terrain texture sample node and then all we have to do is play around in our instance with these two values until the grass is doing what we want it to do so let's go a tiny bit further here tiny bit back there we go, that looks pretty good to me. We're not getting any grass on our cliff at all. So those two values are 5 for the hardness and negative 0.8 for the offset. As a side note, if you do want to learn how to make your grass get shorter as it gets towards, you know, a specific landscape layer or a slope here, or if you want to stop your grass clipping through, you know, rocks and foliage on your landscape, I have a tutorial here that you can look at. But aside from that, that concludes our video for the day. So what did we learn? We learned two methods of creating auto materials. All of the methods that we looked at today are relatively cheap, especially if you choose not to use the pixel normal in the calculations at all. We're lurping between two colors and also two normal maps. We're using a height texture, and we also learned how to exclude grass from the slope of our landscape. So if you found this video educational or entertaining, make sure that you give it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the videos that are to come, especially regarding landscapes. And as a little aside, we just added a $1 tier to our Patreon. Um, so if you would like to say thank you for all the content that is being produced, then that is the perfect way to do so, and we would really greatly appreciate it. As always, if you need any clarification on any of these tutorials or just Unreal Engine in general, make sure you join the Prismatica Discord in the description. We have an 100% answer rate, uh, even if they are, you know, I don't know, or it's impossible. And so with that, uh, we say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>